lovelies, this is Kim from VizArts and KimAndCaboodle.com. Uh, today I'm going to be doing a demo for um, how to throw a simple pot. Um, I'm going to weigh my clay really quick because I neglected to. So you're going to hear that scale. And this is going to be just a little bit over a pound and a half of clay. And uh, I'm going to go through my typical, like, what do I do for people who are just beginning to throw kind of lecture. So um, bear with me if you've heard this before, because many of you watching this are probably actually my students. Uh, I got a bat here, and inside this bat is a little square, a little made of made of made of made of made of made of, made of masonite, um, and it locks in once you have your bat on your wheel. It locks into place just like that. This is again a little bit over a pound and a half of clay. I'm gonna kind of squish that down gently into the middle. Now, a lot of times what I like to do, especially for beginners, is I will uh, dip my finger in the water, turn the wheel on low and draw a little circle. This little circle creates a bullseye and that way you can see the very middle of your bat or the surface you're throwing on. And then I turn it to anchor it down with a little skirt um, to attach it to the clay. Really great, really great way to tell that this is anchored is you can flip this upside down. I'm not gonna do that because I'm pretty sure I'm good. Um, some people might ask, hey Kim, why do you throw with rubber gloves on? Well, uh, one, I have a manicure. Uh, two, uh, some people in, uh, especially in classes that I teach that have autistic students, uh, some people have some touch sensitivity. And so I wanna promote that, you know, seeing people throw with gloves on is not a weird thing because, you know, sometimes people have touch sensitivity. They don't like touching slimy things and it, it has a negative impact on their lifestyle and how they, they do. Um, also, if you have um, eczema or any other skin related um, irritations, gloves can be a really great way to kind of combat that. Uh, sometimes when I'm teaching here at VizArts all day, uh, my hands get super dry and it's really hard to maintain uh, with as much hand washing as I'm doing, uh, even with copious amounts of lotion. So gloves kind of help prevent with that too if it's been a particularly long day. So I'm gonna wet my hands, wet my clay, put my hands down into a field goal position uh, around my clay. Uh, notice thumbs are up, fingers are out, mostly using the middle portions of my hands or the top portions where my kind of the, the other portion of my knuckles are. And I'm gonna turn that wheel on low and start to bring my clay in. Oops, and it just came off, which is a great way to show you how to put it right back on. Smack it down. Make sure that that's again, compressed down into the bat. And again, water, hands together into the field goal and squeezing up to make a cone. Now your cone does not have to be super high, just as high as your hands can make it. As you're squeezing your hands in, the clay has no place else to go but up, so it goes up. Notice I'm trying to keep my fingers out of it. Now sometimes they curl around the clay, that's just my fingers getting comfortable. But uh, for the most part, we just wanna make sure that our fingers are out of the way and that we're compressing with the meat portions of our hands, our palms. Um, and that way we're getting that cone to go up really nice and steadily. Now this cone is much higher than necessary, uh, but it's a great way to show you different steps. So after I have done my field goal up to make my cone, I'm gonna make a T for timeout. Left hand in front, right hand on top, and I'm gonna push straight down with my wrist curving down towards my body. Notice that my fingers are not gripping the clay. And I'm pushing straight down, thumbs out of the way and I move my hands away to have a nice cake shape. A lot of people will say the mound. Um, I am from Kansas City, Missouri, and I studied under the amazing Bernadette Esperanza Torres, who uh, teaches out of Pin Valley Community College and is part of the Kansas City Arts Council and Women of the Arts Council. Uh, and she said the cake, and I definitely caught on to all of her Bernadette-isms. So you'll hear several of those throughout. And hey, Bern, shout out to burnceramics.com. Uh, Burn is amazing and her art is stunning and I am always inspired by her every day. Um, and she, during this, um, you know, making this video due to the COVID-19 lockdown that we have. And so uh, she's also making videos for uh, her students to learn by. So uh, good luck with your videos, Burn. Uh, inspired by you doing what I can to uh, make this happen for my students as well. So you can see I've got my cake, my mound. I'm gonna go ahead and show you that cone one more time squeezing in 
squeezing, 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 less pressure glide off the top. If I kept squeezing too hard, I'd nip this top off and I don't really wanna do that. I wanna keep as much clay as possible. Notice between every motion, I'm adding a little bit of water. You don't want your hands to stick to the clay at all. Otherwise you will uh, end up with the clay coming off of the bat again or it, you will lose center, which is the goal is to stay center so that your hands aren't shaking around. Um, and I'm actually gonna show you what that looks like here real quick. So let me kind of clean that up a little bit. So I'm gonna push this off center and this is what happens. So if your hands are wobbling around like this, this is not good. What I like to do is I'll take my hands off the wheel, draw that circle again. Hopefully you can see that. And then I move my clay to the middle of that bullseye. Put my hands in that field goal, squeeze in, cone up, press down. Notice I'm pressing down with my thumbs this time. It works just the same as having that T for timeout position. And I'm gonna make a little bowl um, because it's a warm up for, uh, I'm gonna do a little photo series of uh, like increments of bowls that I'll be posting on the BizArt Ceramics Facebook fan page. So I'm gonna be Post in those pictures of what it looks like every time you increment up to uh, five pound, five pounds, what am I saying? Half a pound, goodness, 0.5 pounds um, in each bowl. So I'll be going up to three pounds, um, starting at half pound and going all the way up to three with half pound increment increases. So this is my warm up for that. So now that I've got my mound, it's really nice, really straight. If you wanna make your, I, I find it's really easy for me to use my wooden rib to really make that side nice and straight and also to make sure that I have no extra clay sitting here on the bottom. If my hands rest on that extra clay, it's gonna cause that wobbly sensation and you'll get off center again. Uh, notice just extra clay I'm sticking back into my bucket. Um, I can recycle that later uh, if I want or make slip out of it. So now I've got straight, ow, that's the manicure there. Um, let it not be said that there aren't uh, dangers in the ceramic studio. Um, my finger got caught in one of these little notches. So not great, that actually kind of hurt. Um, but I'm gonna rinse my top here, get a little wet. I've got my fingers overlapping in the front. I'm gonna have my thumbs meet in the middle and push down gently. Now, some people find that having your thumbs pushing down like this is very uncomfortable. And so if you cannot notch your thumbs like straight down, like in this kind of, I don't know how well I can show that, this you know, kind of straight down position. If you can't do that comfortably, then I like to recommend taking your sponge and making a nub out of it. And then you're going to take that nub and hold it right in the middle until your, that's a lot of water. Sorry, you're gonna take that nub and hold it right in the middle until your hand starts, stops wobbling. Then you're gonna brace your hand and make sure everything feels nice and solid and smooth and then push straight down. Again, we're trying to make sure that we're in the very center of this so you wanna make sure you've got very little to no wobbling at all. Pull your hands out. Um, a lot of people struggle with the idea of how do I know how deep to push. Uh, for me, it's just kind of muscle memory, but what I have decided is for me, my best way is I like to kind of lean my finger inside and this lines up right to my knuckle. And if I stand it up here, this goes past my knuckle. So I've got about a quarter of an inch to half inch of space available. You can also use a ruler. Uh, some people like to stick a needle tool in there. I'm really not fond of the needle tool uh, dip sticking method, kind of like checking your oil because it does put a hole in your clay that you have to compress out. So um, I kind of use both muscle memory and a ruler or my own fingers to kind of gauge spatial distance. Uh, as long as you've got about a finger's width here at the bottom, that's plenty to trim if you decide you're gonna trim your pot. So making a bowl, I've got my hole punched. I'm gonna pull my thumbs apart until, so this is kind of another like using my body to gauge thickness and stuff, is that I can fit four fingers inside and I've got two fingers on the outside. And that's pretty good for over a pound and a half. Otherwise I would say four fingers inside thickness to one finger. Um, I like to use my fingers to gauge where I should pull out, where I should stop. Um, it's just been something that's been very useful to me. So I'm smoothing out that inside, compressing it, using my fingers just as like flat tools, using that flat portion of my finger to just push down gently, make that clay nice and compact. It pushes the clay molecules together, makes them nice and tight. 
this on the inside using your fingers as compression or sponge as compression. Um, you can also use like rubber ribs and things if you want. I'm just using the bare minimum of tools here for this demo. Um, but using, doing this kind of compression helps prevent S cracks. S cracks are, you know, by definition, cracks that are usually slate shaped like an S. A lot of things, different things cause S cracks. Piece is too wet, piece is too dry, piece dries too fast, piece dries too slow. You don't compress enough, you compress too much, you cut it too thin, trim too much, don't trim enough. They, so many different things can cause an S crack. So, you know, you're, even with all the preventative measures you take, it could still happen. I'd say that over time, I've got, I get maybe like one in 10 pieces or less, maybe one in 15 pieces get an S crack these days, but the bigger they are, the easier it is to get an S crack. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do my, my not trademarked, um, but but maybe I should try to know, uh, a method of bringing up the wall initially, which is the crab claw. So I'm gonna wash my hand off here real quick so you can see my hands very clearly. Hopefully. Okay, so crab claw is I like to pinch with my pinchers. My right hand is my crab. Left hand are the fisher folk that are going to be holding the crab. My left elbow is my anchor. I'm always having at least one arm anchored to my body at all times, um, except under uh, like certain circumstances. Uh, it's not often that my arms are in the air because when your arms are in the air, you're flying like a chicken. And unfortunately, chickens are not very stable at the potter's wheel and they will make your wheel go all the way around. So as much as you can, either having your arm braced to your body or braced to a uh, splash guard, whatever you can brace your arms against is really good. If you can't, um, some people are more broad chested or, or bigger shouldered than other people. Having those arms kind of squished into your body so that they can put the pressure there is, is also a good thing. So I've got my crab claw. He's gonna gently pinch. As long as there's more pressure here on the outside, I'm gonna go up. So gently squeezing with those flats of my fingers and then glide off at the top. Now that was a very slow, a short pull because my clay dried up pretty quick. So again, you don't wanna have super uh, dry clay, otherwise your body can grab that clay and, and it messes things up. So we're gonna try again. So again, squeezing, it doesn't matter how many fingers you use, as long as you're using the flats of your fingers and not the points. Again, pressure from the fisherman to the crab. Crab is squeezing. Clay has no place else to go but up, slowly squeezing, and bring that clay nice up and no more squeezing, glide off at the top. So we've got a nice short little bowl. Um, this is gonna be kind of my shape demo for the bowl that I, the bowls that I'll be subsequently making. So at this point, the more pressure I put outwards, so the stronger the crab is, then the more outward your bowl becomes. So my crab's pushing, my crab's being a little bit more forceful on my fishermen. My fishermen are letting that crab come out and you can see the bowl gets wider because of it. And you see these little riblets in there, that's from my thumbnail in the bowl, which I could decide to keep or not keep. It's, it's my choice. This is a pretty good size bowl though. I really like this size, it gives me enough to trim. Um, I don't really wanna go that much bigger. So I've got my wooden rib. I'm gonna kind of push in with my um, inside hand being my pushing hand, my left, my right hand, uh, my outside hand being kind of the catching hand. Uh, Bernadette would always call this Elvis and Costello. And I'm like, you know, I'm sorry, I'm a millennial uh, slash Gen Y slash millennial. So um, not really quite my generation. Uh, I don't know, Dancing with the Stars. I don't watch that show. So, you know, this is, this is how Bernadette would call it. but. The, again, the person who is leading the dance determines who is going to you know, go outside or in. So my inside hand's gonna be my leading person right now and they're gonna push out very gently. My right hand on the outside is just making sure it stays there for support as a block so that it doesn't push out any farther. And just very slowly gliding that to get another little pull, but also mostly to get all this goop off the outside so the outside's nice and smooth. I'm gonna clean up the inside a little bit. Just cleaning that up with that sponge as I like block everyone's view with my arm. 
Um, also, I don't normally like to use the metal rib at my wheel because it, it is very easy to mess up your piece, but if you're careful, um, you can use it. I'm gonna smooth out my inside with it. So you see a little trimble just because I'm, I'm really not a, a fan. But I'm gonna compress that in real good. Hopefully my head's not in the way. You want to see as little of my head and face as possible. And there we go. You can see how nice and compressed that gets. It gets a little darker as it's compressed. That just means it's smooth. So there's a lot of grog and sand in this that, you know, you as the viewer can't feel or, you know, the seeing part, you have to get pretty close to see it. But um, I'm compressing again and take that hand out of the way. You can see I'm not used to filming while throwing. And that's pretty good. I think this is a really nice bowl. Always watch what you're doing. Um, if you are, you know, trying to get something precise. Uh, there are times though when I'm like teaching, I can throw without paying any attention to my work just because of muscle memory, which is also fun. It just you know, for something like this, I'm gonna pay a little bit more attention to because I want it to be nice and smooth on the inside. And that's pretty good. I think we got a pretty good bowl here. Um, gonna shape here on the, just a little bit to get some of that to make a nice traditional bowl shape. Yeah, that's nice. Um, now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my wooden rib and I'm gonna kind of cut a little foot here. So you can see I've got that wooden rib angled slightly so I can get a nice little undercut. And that way I can just let this dry on the bat. Let that pop right off. I'm just checking underneath so you can see me checking the work here. Yeah, that's pretty good. I'm gonna fuss with the shape a little bit. I don't normally work at this position. Um, this is purely just for the video. Normally, uh, I'd be like over here. Uh, this is my 12 o'clock, three o'clock, six o'clock, nine o'clock, but I'm working at six o'clock. So hopefully y'all can kind of see what I'm doing. Um, yeah, this is fine. This is actually like borderline too thin in my opinion, um, cause any thinner anymore working on this and it's gonna drop. Uh, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab a wire tool and cut the top off. Uh, we call it, I call it setting the rim. Uh, making it nice and flat. Sorry, I gotta grab a wire tool. I didn't have one handy. Um, and of course, wire tools are never easy to try and pick up. They're always a pain. All right, so I've got my wire tool here, which is actually made out of a string. Um, I'm gonna wrap that string around the handle. Do not wrap your hands with it. Uh, that is a great way to get your fingers cut off um, and hurt yourself. I'm gonna set my hand on the inside, one hand on the outside. The wire is going to um, push through the clay just a little bit, and then I'm gonna turn that wheel on nice and slow. And as long as I stay still and go, don't go anywhere, then I have set my rim very nicely. Nice and flat and smooth. Um, I use my fingers or my sponge. Uh, I'm gonna use my sponge this time just because how thin this is. My fingers might pinch a little bit too much. I'm gonna smooth that out by kind of cupping that sponge like a little Pac-Man, trademarked. Copyright. Please don't sue me, Capcom. Smooth that out and voila. We have a very nice bowl. I'm gonna use my fingers now because I just can't not use my fingers. I love touching my clay and knowing exactly how it feels. Give it one last check. And this is great. Very nice little bowl. Uh, grab a ruler real quick so we can check its size. Um, it's always good, especially if you're planning to make a set of something to uh, measure. So this bowl goes up to uh, just shy, uh, or no, just right at 3.5 inches. And then it is um, seven inches wide. So in making, let's say I wanted to use this as part of a nesting bowl set, then I need to decide, are all my bowls gonna be the same height or am I going to change height and width together? Uh, either way, whatever bowls fit in need to be, you wanna you know, go for at least a half an inch 
um, smaller uh, in terms of if you want to grab beach bowl individually if you want them to set tightly then you want to be very careful and make it you know you're looking at um, centimeters to millimeters of size change and maybe using calipers instead um, but also keep in mind that if you are making bowls that are not the same height you know how is that height increment going to go up with your bowls so that they kind of move down visually uh, a lot of people who do make nesting bowls uh, make them uh, the same height, but that's not always the case. Um, to remove the bat, there's a little notch here. That's what I got my finger caught in earlier. I'm gonna stick my uh, my wooden rib in there and try to wedge, try to get this out. Um, the trick with this though is that if you're not careful, which I'm trying to be, um, if you're not careful, sometimes you can uh, your tool will slip and gouge your piece. So I'm not always really fond of these uh, little bats, but uh, they do come in handy uh, sometimes. But here's a nice little bowl. We'll figure out uh, what color to make it. I'll do a little bit of light trimming down here, but otherwise it's just gonna be a flat bottom uh, bowl, maybe part of the nesting set. But thanks so much for joining me today and uh, hope that you all have fun at the wheel and I hope that this was uh, educational and if not, mildly entertaining. Take care, bye.